Oh sweet, another detailing video, just what you guys wanted. Wait, what? Huh. I guess this neighborhood is even tougher than I thought it was. Anywho, this is going to be a little bit different than our average detailing video. Today we're going to be getting this uh, Acura MDX here ready for sale. So obviously detailing is a big part of that. That's going to be the first step. Uh, basically we're, we're worried about the first impressions. If somebody's going to come and look at this thing, we want to make sure that uh, they start off liking it before they even dig into anything. So a good fresh detail is a good way to do that. We don't have to go crazy here. We're not going to be doing any hardcore paint correction or real crazy deep cleaning. We just want to make it presentable. And the second step is going to be we got to get some proper pictures of this thing. Uh, just some crappy little cell phone shots. They aren't, they're not going to cut it, man. This is 2019. So we're going to get some nice kind of glamour shots of it after it's been freshly detailed. And then the third step is going to be to come up with an ad that uh, is thorough enough that explains everything and makes people really interested in it, but doesn't just drone on and on and on with huge big paragraphs of a bunch of crap that nobody wants to read. So that's gonna be our one, two, three, three step process of getting this thing listed for sale. So when it comes to getting a vehicle ready to sell it, uh, you gotta pay attention to what jumps out at potential buyers the most. And already right now with what I'm looking at here, I'm seeing cloudy yellow headlights. That's gonna be the first thing on the agenda. I'm going to do that before I even wash this thing, just because I'm going to be sanding them and that's going to leave a bit of a mess behind so then we can wash it after that. So we got to get those headlights fixed up because those are nasty. Uh, the next biggest thing that jumps out at me is this is supposed to be shiny black paint and it's just kind of dull and uh, boring looking. So again, we're not going for a hardcore paint correction, we're not chasing every scratch and defect, we're not even trying to dig the deep stuff out. Uh, we're going to go with an all-in-one polish, which is perfect if you're selling a vehicle. Because in this case, you've got to be careful about your return on investment here. You don't want to spend $1,000 on a big professional paint correction and ceramic coating and stuff on, I don't know what these things sell for around here, maybe six or seven grand. You always have to be thinking, whatever you're doing, is that going to add value to the vehicle or is it just going to be money wasted? So... Uh, a really quick all-in-one polish is going to be just enough to bring the gloss back out of this paint and give it that freshly polished look that everybody loves so much. But in reality, uh, the general population doesn't have an eye for the details. They don't look for swirl marks and scratches and stuff like that. They just like shiny paint, shiny wheels and tires, clear glass. They're looking at the overall picture. So uh, an all-in-one polish, like today we're going to be using HD Speed, that's going to be... Uh, the name of the game. It's pretty windy out there today, so I guess from this point on we're going to switch over to the uh, the old school Chris Jones Physiques of Greatness style voiceover. Any of you guys that are into fitness know what I'm talking about. If you don't, well, figure it out. Anyways, let's kick it off with uh, headlight restoration. All right, homies and homats. So we gotta get these headlights dealt with right off the bat because they're awful. Uh, I'm using 2000 grit sandpaper. I'm jumping right to some sanding first just because they're pretty bad and I want that to do the heavy lifting for me. I'm also using a KXK Dynamics rib stick for a sanding block here just because it's smaller, easy to maneuver on the tight kind of corners and stuff like that. Then once that's done, I'm uh, switching over to the, my this is actually a Griot's Garage 6 inch DA polisher, but I have it converted down to use 3 inch pads. And so I'm hitting it with Meguiar's M100 compound and a 3 inch microfiber cutting pad. And as you can see, it's making pretty quick work of those 2000 grit sanding marks. Uh, sometimes I'll go through the motions and step through a few different grit sandpaper, but uh, in this case, I just kind of wanted to one and done it, get it over with. And uh, it's a fairly aggressive compound setup, so that didn't have any trouble getting the, the lights cleared afterwards. And then I didn't show it, but I did end up ceramic coating these things with the leftover bottle of g Technic Crystal Serum Light just to keep them from turning yellow too soon. So here you can see the before and after. Uh, it's a pretty big difference, I'd say. They're still not perfect by any means, but they look a lot better than they did before. Now while we got the hood open, may as well take care of the engine bay. I'm using Meguiar's Super Degreaser here. I think I have a diluted 4 to 1 as far as strength goes. 
Uh, that's the more aggressive version of it, and I just leave that bottle that way just because if I do want a more milder cleaner, I just stick with an all-purpose cleaner. If I'm reaching for the Meguiar's degreaser, it's because I want something with some power, so I just leave it the more aggressive version. So there's nothing real fancy about cleaning an engine bay. There's nothing complicated here. It can be kind of intimidating for some people, I guess, but it really isn't that big of a deal. Uh, I didn't cover anything up other than just the battery itself, and even that, I'm not concerned about getting that wet. It's just that he had some uh, some grease on the terminals that was obviously there for a reason. I didn't want to accidentally wash that off, so I just covered it up. But I mean, as long as you're not spraying directly into the alternator or something like that, or exposed wiring harnesses, you're fine with getting it wet. I just came through with my my wheel brushes that I would use for cleaning wheels. I just had that bucket sitting beside me. We'll be doing the wheels next after this anyways, so. Like I said, nothing complicated. It's, uh, it's not a big deal. You don't have to be intimidated about this. I think I've mentioned this before, but I always spray down the fenders beside the engine bay just to make sure that they're wet in case any cleaner gets on them, then it's kind of diluted down and doesn't dry on there as quickly. Just for a little added safety. And once I rinse it off, I come through with my handy dandy work leaf floor and I just blow all the same water off as much as I can. This works really good for that. People laugh at you for pointing a leaf floor at your car, but it works. Next up, again, with the Meguiar Super Degreaser, I, I hit the, uh, the rubber floor mat in the back and the weather tags up front just to uh, clean them up a bit. They're, I mean, the WeatherTechs have the classic WeatherTech staining on them, and I wasn't really concerned with going too crazy with it. Just wanted to get them clean, because I know I'm gonna be cleaning the interior, I want it all to be matching, so. Onto the wheels. And uh, this, I don't think this thing has seen a, a proper hand wash in quite some time. So the wheels and tires were a little bit grungy. Uh, you'll see I'm using an all-purpose cleaner for a wheel cleaner on these. And that's because even though I'm pretty sure these are the, the factory Acura wheels, these have been custom powder coated. And uh, I know the guy that powder coated them, I've worked on some of the other wheels that he's done before. And I know he always recommends to his customers that they don't use strong wheel cleaners after they've been powder coated. I've used wheel cleaners on wheels that he's powder coated before and never had any problems, but in this case I just wanted to be safe so I stuck with an all purpose cleaner. And it worked okay. I also cleaned up inside the wheel well here. And on some cars, like on lowered cars, you don't have to worry about this, like on my MR2 for example. Uh, the wheels fill up the, the gap in the wheel well so you can't really see anything in there, but on uh, crossovers or SUVs or pickup trucks that you can see inside the wheel well, you, you want to take this extra step because it's definitely noticeable when the rest of the vehicle is clean. Uh, the general rule of thumb for me is if you can see it, you got to clean it. So that goes for a few things too interiors, uh, stuff like that. Then I cleaned up the tires, and uh, again, Meguiar Super Degreaser. I had to do a couple laps on these just because they hadn't really been done. So, uh, you'll see the first round, the suds were kind of yellowish and brownish. The second time, they're a lot more white, which means now we've got everything off the rubber, and now we got a clean tire. Now, because this thing had so much grime built up on it, I decided to pre-rinse it with an all-purpose cleaner just to help break it down first. Here we got uh, Buddy Van Dudo here just taking his stolen lawnmower for a walk. But yeah, I wouldn't do this on vehicles that you care about the wax or sealant on them because it, it will strip it off. Now, because we're polishing this thing, that's actually a good thing. We want this thing, we want this thing to be right down to the, the bare paint. And you definitely don't want to let this dry on the surface, especially working out in the sunshine. This will stain your paint if you leave it on there. Uh, but So you just want to be smart about it. Don't leave it on for too long and make sure you're, you're keeping it wet. After that, I just followed it up with a regular two bucket wash. I'm not being super careful with washing this thing because quite honestly, the paint on this thing is pretty trashed. So of course I don't want to inflict any damage myself, but at the same time I'm not really clinging to perfection on this paint job, so there's some room for error there. Alright, so now at this point the, this thing is clean, but we got to get it decontaminated because we are going to be polishing. And if your pad happens to pick up anything that's stuck into the paint and start spinning with it, you are going to inflict a lot more damage than you're fixing with your, with your polisher. So I'm just doing a real quick clay bar. I'm using an auto scrub sponge, of course. I'm, I'm kind of overusing regular clay bars now. 
I never use them unless I'm going to be polishing afterwards, so I don't really care if this mars the surface more than a regular play bar does. It doesn't really matter to me. And to save time, I'm just using my soapy wash mitt for lubrication. Sometimes I'll use O&R or detail spray. You can feel free to use whatever you like, whatever you feel comfortable with, but uh, this was the, the quickest and easiest way for me to get this done. One final rinse and uh, we'll be on our way for some polishing. All right, now we're getting to some real meat and potatoes here. I'm starting off, this is a before and after shot. You can see I'm about halfway down this side. You can see how much of a difference an all-in-one polish like HD Speed can make. This is no joke, like we're seeing a real difference here with very minimal effort. Is it a true paint correction? Are we fixing all of the scratches? No, not even close, but we're bringing that gloss and that reflection, which is what the average Joe cares about. So this is HD Speed. Uh, I think now it's branded as 3D Speed. I don't know, but it's all the same stuff. Uh, I'm using uh, Grillo's Garage G21 buffer. This is their big boy, the 21 millimeter long throw. This is my workhorse. It gets a lot of work done quickly. Uh, I'm using bigger six inch pads. These are uh, Orange Lake Country pads. These are considered their heavy cutting foam pad, which still doesn't have anywhere near the cutting ability that a microfiber pad would, but this is if this isn't like a light polishing pad, this is a stiffer foam. And I do that because HD Speed is such a mild product that uh, this adds a little bit of cut. I don't have to worry about any kind of problems with finishing because this is the product is so mild. But using a, a more firm pad just helps to get a, it boost the cut just a little bit. You can fix a few more defects this way. Kind of get a little bit more bang for your buck. So I'm just using uh, just a couple of drops of this stuff on a pad at a time. I don't, in this case, I don't prime the pad first or anything like that. They actually recommend just going straight to just using a couple drops, and so I stick with that. Uh, I'm running, I think speed-wise, I'm running this thing wide open, speed six, fast arm speed. We're not, we're not trying to do a paint correction here, so we can get away with moving quickly, and because we're not trying to dig out all of the deep defects, we're just trying to bring the gloss out and. I guess I haven't explained this yet. The reason this is considered an all-in-one polish is because it literally has everything mixed into one product. So basically, it's got your your polish that's gonna kinda do almost like a one-step paint correction, but obviously it's not that aggressive. And then it also has a wax or sealant built into it as well. So literally, when you, when you pull your machine off the paint and wipe that product off, you're done. Like, you're... It's been polished and protected all in one step. And that's what makes this such an awesome game changer for when you're putting a car for sale because I think I polished this entire MDX in about an hour. Whereas with a paint correction, even for a one step correction, you're, you're gonna eat up the better part of a day doing that. So for an hour out of your time and very minimal effort, I mean, you can see I'm not working hard here. Uh, every once in a while I'll find a, a deeper scratch or a deeper mark that you'll see me kind of do a bit of a scrubbing motion to try and dig it out a little bit. I'll, I'll increase the pressure a little bit more too just to kind of give it a bit of a, a bit more bite. Uh, but aside from that, it's just fast movement, uh, firm pressure but not crazy. And you can also see I'm working directly outside in the sun here. I, I could have done this in the garage if I wanted to, but I wanted to show you guys that anybody can do this outside in your driveway. You can uh, work with this kind of stuff in, in any condition really, and as you can see it wipes off super easily, even after it's been sitting on the panel for a little while outside. And I'm cycling through a few different pads. Like every couple of panels I'll, I'll swap to a nice clean pad, just to, you always want to work clean. Even when you're not doing hardcore correction here, you, no matter what, when you're polishing you always want to work clean. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, anybody can do this really, there's not much danger with something that's uh, so gentle as this is on the paint. This is not like a hardcore cutting compound that you could screw up your paint with. You'd have to really try hard to screw this up. So if you've got a dual action polisher, then grab yourself an all-in-one polish, throw your headphones in, turn up the Taylor Swift, and uh, get after it. All right, now on to the interior. So the, the very first thing you want to do with your interior is you got to take all your personal belongings out because, I mean, nobody wants to buy a vehicle that looks like somebody's been living out of it. Grab those uh, gym shoes. <laughs> I'm glad those things weren't wet when I pulled them out. 
but yeah, all the, all the old water bottles, the receipts, all the stuff that a lot of people keep in their vehicles and forget all about, rip all that out because you're gonna have to get it out anyways when you sell the car, so you may as well do it now. And it's up to you whether you put it back in or not. For me, I would rather just leave it out and live with it for a couple of weeks while it's up for sale and then it's gone when it's gone. Once you've done that, you can actually see the floor of your car for the first time in the last five years. <laughs> then it's time to give it a really good thorough vacuuming. You wanna, again, like I said before, with the wheel wells, if you can see it, you gotta clean it. So that means like on top of the floor mats, under the floor mats, under the seats. If you can see where dirt is hiding, then other people can see that too. So get in there, get into the consoles. Obviously, you know, take your stuff out there first so you're not sucking all of your pens and stuff into your vacuum, but get that junk out of there. Now for the dash, uh, the interior on this car is really not that bad. It's just dusty, but it's not, I didn't feel the need to like shampoo the carpet or anything. If you've been lazy and you've allowed your vehicle to get to that level, then you're going to have to do that. But in this case, it was just dusty. So for the dash, I, I just stuck with uh, optimum no rinse on a towel for this just because I'm getting rid of some light dust and that's perfectly safe for navigation screens like this. You don't have to worry about any touch screen problems. And so I just gently uh, wiped down the whole dashboard and that was it. Now for the door panels, that's a different story because uh, these panels actually come into contact with your body. So I know it sounds disgusting, but you're gonna have like oils, sweat stains, uh, sunscreen, makeup, all that kind of trash is gonna be on there from just coming into contact with your body. So I I stepped it up to an all-purpose cleaner for these and I'm just showing you how I switched through a, a few different brushes just to get into all the little nooks and crannies. And kind of like polishing paint, I'll break a, a door panel down kind of piece by piece into different sections and just work on a section at a time. That way you don't have to worry about your cleaner drying onto the surface and causing trouble with that. So now we got the car detailed, now you gotta get some pictures of it. and. You want to get uh, as many angles as possible and if you're not sure what angles to get and how to make it look good, go on the Auto Trader or Craigslist or something and just see how a car dealership advertises a used car for sale. Look at all their angles that they use and just steal them. Do what they do. Because if you think about it, this is their whole business model. They buy a car for less than it's worth and they do this process and then they make more money on it. So just copy them. So as you can see, we wrote up a, a quick ad. Uh, you just want to get to all the good stuff, any maintenance or anything that you've done, and uh, brag about any money that you spent on it. Brag about how great your car is. Don't lie. Be honest. Don't be a piece of crap. If there's known problems, then admit it. They're gonna find out anyways, so you don't need to try and screw people over. But uh, yeah, this is your your moment to tell everybody how awesome your vehicle is and how much they're gonna love it. And now because you detailed it and you spent so much time making it look good, it's gonna live up to the hype when they come and see it. So these are the after shots, just kind of a walk around showing you the final results of, of what this thing is looking like. And I don't know about you, but if I was in the market for an Acura MDX, I'd buy this thing. I think this thing looks pretty good. I think this is a pretty good turnaround on this. Again, it's not perfect, but we also didn't spend two weeks on this. This was, I knocked this out outside on my driveway in a day. And that includes like pictures, everything. So if I can do it, you can do it. You can see the, the beautiful stripper glitter that's thrown into the powder coat on these wheels. It's now, you can kind of see it on the video that the sun is picking it up. Uh, paint's looking nice and glossy and wet. Feels smooth. People are going to freaking love it. So anyways, that's how I lift the car for sale, guys. And uh, you feel free to mimic this entire process. Use it for yourself. I've used this personally to sell my own Grand Cherokee and it sold for like twice the cost of what other comparable ones were listed for online. I've done this for a bunch of other vehicles as well, so uh, put a little elbow grease into it, put some effort into it, and you're going to get that back and it's going to sell quicker for more money. You got nothing to lose. Worst case, it sells for the same money, the new owner's got himself a, a bit better of a car and you're a bit better of a person for for passing it off to the next guy in good shape. So do the right thing, clean it up, advertise it the right way. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.